What's up guys, this is Automotive Anonymous and if you're new to the channel, well, I do our car reviews, 0 to 60s and other cool stuff like that. If you're not new to the channel and you've been watching for some time, thank you so much for your support. It's fun to connect with you guys in the comments. What we're going to do today is a review of this 2023 Subaru Legacy Premium and it's a really cool vehicle. And something cool I want to share with you guys today filming this video and a few others is the 6 month anniversary of when I just randomly decided to start this channel because I love cars and it's a fun hobby to do and I'm not doing physical therapy. So with that said, let's get right into it. If you guys like this video, please consider commenting. Tell me more of what you want to see and what your thoughts are on this vehicle. Like to help the vehicle review get shared and then subscribe because I have new cool stuff coming out weekly. Anyways, this is the Legacy Premium. So it's the seventh generation of the legacy that started in 2020 subaru sells about 20 to 65 thousand of these every single year though with the outbacks and the foresters becoming more popular the number recently has been on the smaller side of that it's in black crystal which even dirty it looks really good the base model would start at about 24,000. This one would start at about 27,000 before destination, but with some of the extra goodies on it, it's closer to 31,000. It's below MSRP, so I'm going to link the dealer website below that has this vehicle because they're a good dealer to work with. Otherwise, this premium being the second of five trim levels is pretty cool with a 2.5 boxer. It gets decent power and decent mileage, 182 horse, but I'll show you the engine in just a little bit and 27 city 35 highway with an 18 and a half gallon tank the same size as the outback you're looking at 650 miles of potential road trip and baby not bad for a sedan of this size and with the comfort that it offers 5.9 inches of ground clearance so symmetrical all-wheel drive so it's quite capable but it is down 2.8 inches over the outback you still have really bright leds which i highly recommend if you guys can swing a model that has Subaru LEDs over halogens, please do. You're gonna thank yourself for a long time if you do any sort of night driving. And the front end is functionally upgraded for this new year. It's a refresh for 2023. There's a few other little changes with the infotainment screen, but otherwise slightly different bumper. Not too bad. Just cut that out. That's where the function comes in or the fun and function when you're cutting that out and you're adding some more aerodynamics to the wheels, which Speaking of, they are really nice. They are 225, 55, 17. So you get pretty good sidewall on it. It makes for a really comfortable ride. And then the two-tone color scheme just looks really good on this vehicle. Overall, it's about 16 feet long, six feet wide, and five feet tall. Let's get inside. You'll notice you have the lines to lock it, or you could put your hand here Sometimes it takes a second to grab the right spot and it unlocks. That's part of the proximity key. You can also have a remote start if you pay for the My Subaru app. Anyways, to the door panels, for being the premium, you get some pretty premium materials. You get the carbon fiber type of thing, nice door handle, your buttons for the windows and the mirrors, and a pretty good sized handle with a lip so it's easy to grab or store some light items in there. Soft touch armrest with good stitching, bottle holder, and you can fit some snacks. What kind of snacks are you going to carry? Are you going to carry milk bones for your dog? Are you going to carry beef jerky for you? Or something else? I guess there's more options than those two. Anyways, medium sized Subaru on the door sill plate, which is just plastic lined. You have rubberized all weather floor mats in this one, rubberized pedals. You have fuse box here, hood release down here. These are the settings you get. If you check out my Touring XT video or the Limited or the Sport, you'll notice a few more options that you can get on the higher trim levels. Trip reset, ventilation, 10-way power adjustment for the driver with a really nicely bolstered cloth seat. Moonroof up top. But let's hop in and fire this puppy up. Push button start. It does have the optional package that gives you the braking, the cruise features, the upgraded 11.6 inch screen and then for 2023 you have the settings down here like for heated seats where it doesn't open up a sub menu which i really like the thing i don't like and please listen to me subaru a lot of us have been complaining we don't like the auto start stop on this not that it's bad it's just i don't know that starting the engine an extra dozen times per drive is worth a couple cents of gas savings for the wear and tear you're going to be giving but it's really not a big deal to turn it off it becomes muscle memory after just a few drives 
Leather wrap steering wheel feels really good. New for 23, you also get the toggle switch right here instead of the paddles that used to be down there. See what settings it has. This one also has navigation on that 11.6 inch screen. It does have the wireless charging upgrade and auto vehicle hold can be controlled through the car features right there or you can get electronic parking brake right there. Piano black is a really nice feature. You drop it down to manual mode, slap it over and play musical simulated gears with the paddles if your heart desires. Otherwise you have two really nice rubber floor lined cup holders, they're deep and they should be out of the way for most size drinks. And then the two stage center armrest with an outlet, a 12 bolt. If you saw my touring video, it does have a CD player in there, which is a pretty cool feature. Otherwise up top, you of course get Compass, dimming mirrors, home link, place to hide was traditionally sunglasses. Really good LED lights that shine the light exactly where they need to be. Sunroof with tilt and sliding features. But let's turn off the car, let's hop in the back of the Legacy and see how we like it sitting behind ourselves. To the back door panel you guys know what it looks like by now really good multi materials used it's sort of lightens up the interior not being all dark cup holder or bottle holder there's a little bit of extra storage and then the speaker down there you have a little bit of grip so if you really had to step on there and had some roof rails or something you needed more height for you could probably do that and then it's a 60 40 split 40 on this side you fit your long items, your 2 by 4s whatever you got in the back of the Legacy, no problem. And the cloth seats look really nice. You do have your tie downs for child seats up here. If it was a higher trim level, you'd have a subwoofer up there with the Harman Kardon speaker system. And how is it sitting behind myself at 5 foot 11? It's pretty comfortable. That's what guys, like 3 inches of room probably. Single map pocket, ventilation, USB-C and B. Man, I have a pretty good view of up front when I'm being chauffeured. The heated seats on the higher trim levels really are a nice feature, but these cloth seats do a great job. I think you're going to be just fine and feel pretty warm sitting in them. Armrest, decently bolstered and very sturdy and fits up to my second digit. So just be careful that you don't have too high or top heavy of a cutback here. Otherwise, it's a pretty good place to be. Two ways to unlock the trunk are with the remote or the button that's just under the Subaru. And then good shocks, you saw that popped right up. 15 cubic feet of room is what you get back here. The all weather mat is down here and then the factory legacy mats are right there. You have a little bit of storage, you have all the tools if we were to look further into the foam and then temporary spare tire down there. So yeah, basically all you need, you have a few little spots, um, tie down bags, a little bit of room behind the wheel wells but nothing too crazy that fits into that 15 cubic feet. Departure angle, pretty decent for a sedan. The other door panel looks basically identical. Again, one map pocket, good seats. The 60 drop is a little bit heavier than the 40 as you could imagine, but they're pretty easy to move. I do have the shotgun seat kind of obnoxiously slid all the way back and then reclined decently so you can see what a really big passenger sitting up front would leave you with. And that's more than some of the smaller sedans I've been in, so not too bad. Again, proximity key for lock and unlock features. Door panel looks identical to the driver. You're just missing a few of those extra controls. Baby size Subaru down here. That's the price for this one, a little bit under MSRP, and then manually adjusted seats. It is a top safety pick, so we know our backpack is gonna be safe now that it's old enough to sit up front. Storage above the glove box, and on the side it's locking, and there's a 12 volt hidden away down there too. Decently sized, but it's not huge. All right guys, where's the engine? We wanna see what it looks like under the hood. If you were to do your own maintenance, have it worked on, or just wanna know what's under there, check it out. And there we have it. It's a fantastic design by Subaru. Everything's right where you want it to be. If you're not familiar with my videos, I show you under the hood on basically all of them. So we have windshield washer reservoir, coolant reservoir, top mount oil filter, zero W20 full synthetic fill, battery, positive terminal, negative terminal, brake fluid reservoir, 
And then we have the serpentine belt, which would be so easy to change on this vehicle. It's just right there and there's a lot of room. You have the cover so you don't lose your fingers or get stuck in the engine. That's gonna be kind of awkward to tell people what happened. And then you have ventilation through the air filter, through the piping, the baffling to quiet it down, throttle body to the upper intake manifolds, the alternators right up top, oil dipstick, and you can even see where the block is split because it's right there. Really good design by Subaru, 182 horse, 176 peak pound-feet of torque. Drop the hood, take it for a drive. And before we teleport inside, I wanna show you guys one more thing. It has the third gen iSight cameras. The Touring I just got out of and reviewed, that had the, uh, the fourth gen that had the extra camera in the center. Initial driving impressions of the Legacy Premium are that it's really good, being the front half of an Outback. Visibility, as you could imagine, is just fantastic. Comfort and ride quality are really good, knowing the capabilities that this has with the symmetrical all wheel drive and about six inches ground clearance. They do so well in the snow, in the rain, slush, ice, all those things. You're gonna be surprised at how well Outbacks do, Legacies do, Foresters, all of all the Subarus that have symmetrical all wheel drive are just fantastic with the low center of gravity. You do have blind spot monitoring, the heads up display with all those adaptive cruise features again right there. It has the compass, home link for your garage door openers, and that button that's lit up green right there is for the auto dimming mirrors, which are really good. Because the road and wind noise aren't too bad in the cabin of the Legacy sedan, the speakers for not being Harmony Kardon are honestly just fine. You feel like you're sitting, you know, you have a really good view of everything going on right here. Armrests are comfortable, cup holders are low and out of the way, the shifter is right where it should be. And you could easily set your phone in there or if you don't have the wireless charging upgrade, it's a nice little pocket that you could fit some snacks or your phone. You of course have those storage areas on the passenger shotgun seat side. But otherwise, it's a comfortable ride and it's fun to be in going through all the country roads that we go through. I don't think you're going to miss the extra couple inches of ground clearance that an Outback has unless you're really in the heavy stuff or you just need the extra cargo capacity. Otherwise, I think the sedan really does just fine. We're going to get up to speed. This one doesn't have sport mode or anything, but traction control is off and I'll give it about half throttle. You can see the CVT's faking shifts in the zero to 60, we'll see if it holds shifts or if it fakes them. And having gone out of the Touring XT just a little while ago and having driven the Sport, I have a video of that from a number of weeks ago. The turbo makes a big difference, but if you're not gonna be driving with a car full of people stuff, you know, towing a small amount or doing anything else, driving through altitude, elevation, mountain passes, you're gonna be just fine in this. The 2.5 Boxer does adequate for what it is. The turbo just gives you more to have more confidence and a lot of fun, but it's not necessarily needed under normal driving, especially if you're not having to get on the gas a lot in the vehicles you already drive, if you're not having to pass semis and farm equipment and stuff like that, it does just fine. The wheelbase is still decently large in this because it's what the Outback's based off of and the sedan is about 15 feet long, so it's not a small one by any means. So it feels stable to the road, being a little bit under 4,000 pounds. It does just fine. Let's do just a brief 60 roll if you just had to get around something really quickly. It does okay. But guys, we're almost to our private road, so we're gonna do zero to 60 with GPS next. Zero to 60 in the 23 Legacy Premium. Traction control's off, I'm gonna brake, grab the CVT. Density altitude's 2,200 feet right now. True altitude's about 3,800 feet. So we're down on power probably seven to eight percent. I'll verbalize the true zero to 60, but the bottom left of the graph to follow will show what it does without the foot of rollout. That's how the magazine would rate the same run. Let's go. felt a little bit faster than I was expecting. 8.7 second true seconds really isn't bad, again, for the elements that we're working with and in our area where vehicles do not run what they're rated. I just hopped out of the Turbo Legacy. If you want to see what that did, 060, check out one of those videos. It's a couple seconds faster than this. Anyways, let's get to our final thoughts. 
Final thoughts of the 23 Legacy Premium. What do you think, guys? Which one would you buy? I've reviewed four of the five trim levels now, everything but the base, and I think they're all pretty good value for the money in comparison to what their competitors are. This one obviously is not as nice as the 9,000 more expensive dollar touring I just got out of, or the Sport or the Limited from a few weeks ago. But for 31 grand to have heated seats, a sunroof, all those adaptive safety settings, auto dimming mirrors, you know, the garage door openers, still 15 foot cubic trunk, six inches of ground clearance, all wheel drive. Man, Subaru offers you a lot of stuff, especially where this is like 17 grand below the average new vehicle. Of course, that average includes trucks and SUVs, which inherently are a lot more expensive than passenger cars, but still, you get a whole lot of good stuff for this. Would you guys buy one? What are you comparing it to? Those of you watching my video, actually looking for answers on what is your next car gonna be, potentially. Keep in mind, liking, commenting, and subscribing helps grow the channel if you guys are interested in helping me out. Otherwise, I'm just glad you guys made it this far and you're watching my video. And if you want this one or want to check out the inventory of the link below, they're a good dealer. New stuff is under MSRP, so there it is. I'll leave it in the comments, the description below. Take care, guys.